Into your heart I'll beat again. I just woke up, so I'm even more off key than normally. But um, that is me talking to little Jenny. I've spent years reconnecting with her, crashing into her. Uh, that's the title of uh, the album for the Dave Matthews Band. But um, Into Your Heart I'll Beat Again, it, it's taken years and years for me to get through to little Jenny and have her help her um, not be so afraid and heal her wounds. I've actually gone back into my memories as my older self. Um, the earliest one I did that to was we were on a cruise ship and at age three years old something had happened. Um, so, um, you know, without giving too much away, I, uh, I helped her by drawing up a nice warm bath for her and um, gently uh, taking a warm washcloth and talking softly with her and cleaning her up after experiencing what she experienced. And I know it's out there, but I think if each of us revisited our painful pasts, not to stay in them and simmer like a stew, I feel like a lot of therapy sessions go on for years just doing that, but going back with your today self and going back to comfort and listen and validate and know, let, let the little you know that you are not alone. And not only do I go back in my memories and heal those that I don't even, those memories no longer have to pop back in is another out there thing is I've actually met my uh, future self before and I've met my younger self. I've talked about this before, but when I was in elementary school, I remember uh, laying in bed waiting for it to happen, um, for the footsteps coming down the stairs. Our, our bedrooms were in the basement. And, you know, just laying there in fear the way I did when the earliest memory was uh, age four, five, six. I lived in Madrid at that time. But just, you know, laying, waiting in fear. And, um, but it was cool because when I, when we were in the States, um, I could, when I was laying there, it was weird. My, my hand could um, feel an outline of me, like an outline squishy wall, squishy, that's the word my friend Ben Ben used, a squishy wall um, outlining all around me, a couple inches um, extended beyond my whole body. And what's interesting, I didn't know what it was, I even tried squeezing it together, like pinching it, but it would pinch, but it could only, my fingers couldn't not touch, there was the squishiness in between, and uh, what it is, it's today's body, so um, I don't know, it was weird, as a child, I felt today's body, and I felt safe, oh, I felt safe when that body was with me, so, you know, I am with that um, scared little girl, and then also, after I left a, a similar situation with the 20 years with my, uh, anyhow, I divorced, and um, I was finally, you know, no one really, you know, being safe and not looking over your shoulder is an amazing feeling. It was not until age 37 that I was absolutely free from that. I could breathe in my own home, my own bedroom. It was ama it's, it's amazing. I didn't realize how quiet and peaceful 
it is when you're not vigilant all the time. But after I, uh, the girls and I got our own place, I walked um, from the back door through the kitchen towards the front, and I was alone, well, except for my pets, but um, the kids were at school, and I was the, the only human there. And I walk by, and I had passed a figure. So, <laughs> kind of like a silly cartoon, I walk backwards, retrace my steps, and there's this young 21-year-old um, on a stool. Oh, she was so young and so pretty and soft and vulnerable and not as uh, used up. And... Uh, Oh, gosh. And I, it was me. It was me. And she's just looking at me with the scared big eyes. And I said, without words, I said, see, I told you we'd get out of here. And I remember a voice, an inner voice telling me that throughout uh, my adult life. And it was me. Um, my higher self and my higher self was at that time my self that did get, and I'll say us, did get us out of there. So I know these are all little out there.